Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, got pretty normal conditions for here. Uh, although the trade winds are not blowing very strong today, they are blowing, but you can see those clouds are moving kind of slowly, a little slower than usual. All the reasons why the Victron charge controller is a must out here. So I do get asked quite a bit about uh, why I use Victron Energy Smart Solar Charge Controllers. And I'm going to show you why, and hopefully I'll get a good demonstration watching it live. Although, like I said, the clouds are moving kind of slow today. Usually they're zipping by really um, quite quickly under normal conditions. Now the first MPPT charge controller that I used was this EP Ever. Uh, this is a 40 amp charge controller and it worked well, but it would not keep up under these kind of quick changing conditions. And it would start to throttle down long before uh, the batteries were fully charged. So then I eventually made the switch over after uh, trying to get these to work for my conditions. Now they did, I used two of these and they actually did work quite well but only under that real sustained sunshine, not with a lot of intermittent clouds rolling through. So besides these two that I use that are tied into a network uh, now on the main house, I use this 7515 for a small 24 volt system. I use the 130 for another 12 volt system. Now on that 24 volt system, I've just got 300 watts of panels. On this one, I've got 500 watts of panels uh, tied into this. And then I use the 15035 for a 48 volt system with 700 watts of panels coming in. So we're gonna take a look at the, lo the live uh, log on the 48 volt system, which has 700 watts of panels coming in under these conditions. And even though those clouds aren't moving as briskly as normal, look at how that wattage changes. I'm going to just let it run here for a minute so you can see it live. But it's all over the place, right? Because these clouds are moving through, the sun bursts through a little bit. And look how fast this MPPT from Victron keeps right up. And this makes a huge difference in the amount of power I will get all day long. And you can see now, you know, there's a cloud rolling through, 700 watt arrays dropping way down. <clears throat> Here it comes back up. And it just, it just keeps up with the, the fast moving conditions out here, which at the end of the day makes all the difference for how much power I can get into my battery. So even under these cloudy conditions, fast changing conditions, uh, the Victron just keeps right up. Where the EP Ever that I used to use, and you can see on some of my earlier videos, I struggled with it all of the time, uh, trying to get the batteries up to full. It would start to throttle down uh, at the first uh, burst of sun that might push it up into an, uh, an absorption voltage. Where the Victron, it just keeps keeps pumping the power till these batteries truly get up to a full absorption and a full uh, float. So there you go, that's live. Now under fast moving conditions, this thing's all over the map real quick, but it all adds up. And here's a look at that 100 volt 30 amp charge controller. Now it, it allowed all the power to come in just as quick as possible. And now it's allowing zero watts in and and why? Because you can see I'm in absorption and it's just taking zero watts to hold it at 14.2 for its two hour absorption phase. So again, even under these conditions, it had no problems uh, getting that battery full today. Now it wasn't drained very far either, so there's that to be said, but um, you're starting to get the idea why I'm using these Victrons.
And then back here on my, what I call my main house bank <clears throat> or main house controllers. And I've got these, there's a 500 watt string into that controller and a 500 watt string into that controller. And we can look at this. <clears throat> now this is the, what I call the top string. And same thing, you can just see how it's completely uh, fluctuating to the maximum amount that it can pull off of those panels. And it's, it's also, it, you know, on a spike, it went up to that absorption voltage, so it's showing it in absorption, but it is not tapering down in any kind of a way. It's still opening those panels up uh, as much as they can. And of course, uh, right now there's only 200, and you see 50 some, 60 some watts coming in. And as soon as that sun gets a little bit more visible on those uh, arrays, it'll jump right back up and, and push this up to 14.2, where that EP ever, which is ever since I introduced the uh, Victrons, <laughs> I haven't even taken it off the wall and it is disconnected. Now, the thing about this is every time it would get to that the first hint of getting into the absorption voltage, it would just basically shut my array off and it just wouldn't keep the fast tracking up or keep it opened up fully to just keep pushing my batteries up all the way under these kind of conditions. Now in a really sustained sunshine, uh, this worked just fine. But on these quick moving clouds in these conditions, it just couldn't do it. So. As much as I liked the EP ever, there's no comparison for these conditions. Now, your conditions may vary depending where you live, but what I just showed you is basically a normal condition out here. Yeah, so there it is. Just, you know, now, like I said, if, if, if the trade winds were blowing up at their 20 to 30 miles an hour up high, those clouds would be ripping so fast, you could see this go down to 100 watts and up to 500 watts in just like a millisecond. I mean, it's so quick that it really keeps up. So, you know, here's my voltage now at 13.79. It wants to go up to 14.2 and hold it at that absorption for the, the two hours that it's programmed to do. And it is absolutely letting in the maximum amount of power it can get off of those solar panels. It's not throttling down at all. There it goes. You know, it's ready to go up to 300 and some. It's ready to go higher than that if the sun's out and the clouds aren't shading those panels. And then you can see the voltage quickly starts coming up closer to 14. So now if it would open up to 500 watts, this would jump right up to 14.2, which is recognizes as absorption. So yeah, I hope that kind of clears it up. Why? Why I go with these is because, especially here, uh, there's just no comparison on the controllers. And one more thing I'll try and show you on the history of this particular panel. So uh, earlier in the day, you know, it did, if you look right there, you know, it just, it went up to 14.2 uh, briefly. And so then the charge controller says, okay, we're heading into absorption, you know, the the yellow light clicks on for absorption. They're both tied into the same network and they run basically the exact same wattage under these conditions. So even though it's not uh, at 14.2 now, it's gonna just keep trying to get it up there. And that EP ever, once it initially saw a 14.19 or a 14.2, it would just taper those panels off to just a disappointingly low amount of uh, power and it, and it wouldn't push it the rest of the way. So, yeah. And then you can see there, 14 volts. It's still trying to get it up to 14.2. And it just changes wildly and quickly just due to those fast breaking conditions. And another quick look at the 48 volt battery, and there you go. Look, now <clears throat> those panels, of course, when they're under shade and then the sun comes out, it's actually producing a little more than the 700 watt string. Now, as that sun hits it, it'll quickly drop back under 700 watts, but 
once again, the Victron opens up the maximum amount of power to try and get these batteries up to what they are set to be uh, charged at. So there, I'm actually overproducing the rating of the array by just a few watts, but 700 watt. And then there, the sun's warming those panels up. Still under full sun, going down a little bit, but wide open, just wide open. So the panels are doing their job under full sun. You know, they just, they're just putting out what they need, but it's the charge controller. It's the charge controller. I mean, you want a charge controller, especially with lithium iron phosphate, you know, let's charge them up full throttle. Uh, the charge controller will shut the panels down when you're full and especially when you go into float and then it can shut the panels off. But until that lithium iron phosphate is fully charged, I don't want to be throttling down in any way. And like I said, and as you can see, those clouds aren't zipping along. And those of you that have watched this channel long enough to know a lot of times when I'm showing those clouds, they are cruising by. Now today, trade winds very slow up there, but it, you know, it still makes a difference. Yeah, that MPPT, that's the way to go. And that's why I stay with Victron. And that's why I'm going to stay with Victron. Because otherwise, I was just not getting up to where I wanted to be. And now, even under these conditions, I get up to where I want to be. And then, that's not even to talk about wintertime when uh, we can get some really dark days. And that thing, uh, those Victron charge controllers, even under low light, uh, do way, way better. So, anyway, I've had a couple of questions about that. It's a beautiful day here. A little warm because those trade winds are not blowing so strong and it warms right up. Uh, I know I'm not gonna get much sympathy from you guys on the mainland, but we're bumping about 82 degrees right now. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. Yeah.